Warning, this video will contain spoilers for Rogue One, a Star Wars story. In Star Wars Rogue One, Darth Vader sliced and diced his way through an entire hallway of rebel troops with great vengeance and furious anger seeking the Death Star plans. We've never seen Vader actually chop through an entire legion of troops on screen. So regardless of whether or not you enjoy canon or legends, if you're a Star Wars hardcore fan, you've seen Vader do ridiculously powerful things in the comics and in the novels, but never quite something like this on the big screen. So for people who have never read the comics and novels, they're probably wondering, well damn, how strong is Darth Vader? On this debut edition of Star Wars Discussion, a brand new series here on Geekdom 101, the legendary Stupendous Wave joins in to discuss how powerful Darth Vader actually is. And guess what? He's a lot more powerful than you could ever imagine. I don't know about you guys, but the vast majority of people I talked to when they were walking out of Star Wars Rogue One or... Rogue One, A Star Wars Story, the one thing that everybody was talking about was Vader, 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 Vader. That last sequence that closed the film, the last, you know, two minutes or so of the movie was a Vader fanboy's dream. And I want to make this video because I want to talk about how strong Vader actually is because there's been a lot of misconceptions from kind of the casual Star Wars audience based upon their, you know, just viewing of just the films versus viewing some of the extra material. And now for the first time in a film, we're actually seeing Vader, and we saw it at the end of Rogue One, joining me to talk about this. Please welcome for the first time ever on Geekdom 101, the Dark Lord of Star Wars YouTube. <laughs> Please welcome Stupendous Wave. Hello, Stupendous Wave. Hey, how's it going? Thanks for having me. Anytime, man. So let's talk about Vader, bro. Now, you are a self-professed Palpatine fanboy. Um, yeah. I'm a Kylo Ren fanboy, but you and I can meet in the middle when it comes to Vader. Now, let's talk about Vader in the past, okay? We've only seen Darth Vader in the suit fighting in, in film, okay? In film with the original trilogy. We saw him fight Obi-Wan. We saw him fight Luke twice. Um, obviously, most fans know that by Return of the Jedi, obviously Luke was really, really powerful, and it was much more of a close fight. In Empire, most of the fan base knows that Vader was holding back. He did not want to kill Luke because he wanted to recruit Luke. But I think now, with Rogue One, for the first time, now people can really, really, I think it really hammered home just why Darth Vader was the most feared entity in the galaxy for like two decades and why he is a lot stronger than anybody ever thought unless, of course, you've read the the, the extra material, which we're going to get to. So, so how did you feel about that? Yeah, it was definitely different. And you do have people, like, that's almost the first comment you read about Vader. It's like, why is he so fast? And this guy should have wrecked Obi-Wan. But it's all about circumstances just like real life fights like someone who's in better shape will lose to someone who's crazier or not as tired it's just all about different factors that you have to take into account and of course vader here he's not fighting anyone that's force sensitive he's not fighting fighting anyone that has that beat him, him before yeah right yeah. and like you said exactly the whole luke duel in bespin is a test and like that's a test and the Luke fight with Vader in uh, Return of the Jedi, like, Vader's conflicted during, like, that whole fight. So if you think about it, this is the only time or, yeah, the only time we've seen Vader not hold back in any regard on screen for the first time. And this is the result. It's craziness. It, it, it was in incredible. Now, um, in the EU, which has now become Legends, uh, we've seen Vader do some incredible feats and a lot of, you know, the fans, the, the, the Star Wars fans, we grew up reading some of this EU stuff and we're just amazed at how strong Vader and Palpatine and Yoda and all these guys were uh, in the Expanded Universe, the Legends. But with the recent Darth Vader comics that Marvel's put out, we've seen, and not just that, but also Rebels, we've seen Vader do things that we never thought could be possible. Well, I thought it was possible, but not in the actual films. Case in point... 
in season two, episode one of Rebels, you know, Kanan drops an ATST on Vader, and Vader picks up the ATST with one hand and just throws it. And in the Star Wars com, or the Vader com, excuse me, uh, there's a scene where uh, Leia and Chewie and Han steal an ATAT, and Vader just destroys the ATAT with the Force. Um, yep. And it was one of those things, you know, stupendous, where, like, in the 70s, like, obviously, okay, the obvious truth is that the movie A New Hope was shot in 1976, I think it was, and it came out 77, and obviously Alec Guinness is an old man, um, we didn't have technology to do, like, you know, Christopher Lee doing flips, like they did in, in, in 2002, and so, of course, the, the, the fight was shorter, but... I think that the writing team behind LucasArts has really fixed this because now we know a little more about what was going on. I want to get to that in a second. But the point is that we've seen Vader, as Darth Vader, do a lot of scary things in the comics and the TV shows. and a, But a lot of people still think that this guy was just really old, uh, and that's why the fight with Obi-Wan was so slow. But age has never been a problem in Star Wars because we have Palpatine, who's an older guy, fighting Yoda in Revenge of the Sith, and he's they're doing crazy stuff. Yeah, uh, like Count Dooku. Count Dooku, and then Yoda is 900 years old, and he's doing crazy stuff. I just never bought into the fact that Vader was too old during the fight with Obi-Wan. Oh, they're aged Jedi. I can't stand that, because age has never mattered in Star Wars. Dude, the Force overcomes everything. So tell us, you know, in your view, because my view's always been Vader was very cautious against Obi-Wan because he remembered the first time they fought, he was reckless, and it cost him, like, you know, his legs, his arm, maybe even his penis. I mean, Dash did a video about that. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to lose that. Tell us, you know, kind of what, what was actually going on in Vader's head during the Obi-Wan fight. Yeah, with it's very important to Vader that he shows Obi-Wan that he's more powerful than him. That's very important. And you can't show anyone that you're m more powerful than them just by killing them outright. You don't have time to savor that moment. But at the same time, he doesn't know how powerful Obi-Wan is. So he has to prod and he has to find that out. He's being cautious. Not only is he cautious because this is a man that's hurt him a great deal in the past, but he wants to know it's important to him to figure out exactly where he is. It's important for Vader not to be number two. Because that's all he is at the end of the day. And it's important for him to prove that he's superior, not just by beating him right away, but by taking a few steps back, prodding, maybe put an attack here, a different attack here, a different sequence here. See where the opponent is. See how they stack up to you. And then overcome them, which we do see. We see Vader quite effectively push him back. But again, that stuff takes, it takes a few steps to get to that point. And he's being cautious through all of it. But with that duel specifically, you can't just look at the fight. You have to look at the background, the history. And if you take it at the fight, yeah, it's a little bit slower. It's kind of boring. But you have to look at what's going on beforehand. You have to think of if you were in Vader's situation or if you were in Obi-Wan's situation, how would you conduct yourself during that fight? And I think the answer would be pretty similar to the way Vader did. Very, very cautious and strategic because, you know, we I think you and I can agree on this one. If Vader had gone all out, he would have chopped up Obi-Wan. Same thing with Luke. Vader would have destroyed both of them, I think, in episode four and five. But he would be more at risk of making mistakes. And as a result of that is what cost him is, you know, right now. Yeah. Do you think that during the fight with Obi-Wan? that Vader may have been having like an Ahsoka moment where he was thinking back, and that's why he was not that focused, you think? I think it's a big anger thing, because with Obi-Wan, like, that's the man he hates, like, second to only himself. That's and deep, man. Yeah, that's, he's someone that he hates second only to himself, and it's not, he, all the hope or love that he had for Obi-Wan, for me at least, that burnt away in the lava, along with his skin. Like, yeah. it all went away. Um, no, I don't think it's remorse at all. I think Dave Filoni put it perfectly. He says that the reason Vader doesn't flinch with Ahsoka is because if that were to happen, then Luke turning Vader would have been less impactful. I agree. Which is why I really respect them for not doing that, because you could really go, like, that route very easily, but they hold that back. Um, it's very important that he does not give in to Ahsoka, and even more so Obi-Wan, or, although I would say, like, Obi-Wan, it's even... I will never, ever see 
Vader giving into Obi-Wan or even reminiscing about anything good with his master. I think it's all just covered by hatred. Like, think about it. In Rogue One, he literally lives in the place that reminds him of where that guy cut him down. So... The birth of Darth Vader, essentially. Yeah, exactly. For a lot of people, that's where Darth Vader is born. It's not where... When he was deemed Darth Vader, he's not really Darth Vader. From that moment when he's cut down, he's Darth Vader. Like, that's where people see him truly be that. But, of course, like you said, if this if Darth Vader just went full at Obi-Wan, it wouldn't be a very long fight at all. But at the same time, if Obi-Wan went straight at Vader, uh, it, the fight would look very different. Because Obi-Wan's not as weak as people say he is in A New Hope either. No, like we talked about age yeah. is not that big of a deal in Star Wars. There's, there's all kinds of old guys doing crazy stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And the yeah. Force works like... For someone to say the age is a big factor, like, I just kind of just want to put my hand in my palm because I'm like, you're really saying that a quadruple amputee who has severe burns and you're like saying age is the biggest thing that's holding him back. Like, like get out of here. No. Yeah. And now, now another thing now I'm going to ask you about Obi-Wan's perspective of that fight. I felt like he was just kind of taking it easy and kind of being more cautious also because he wanted to make sure that Luke was there. Cause I always thought yeah. that he wanted to wait for Luke to show up before he died so that I'm guessing what he was trying to do is to show Luke that he that you can become one with the Force. Kind of give him a, a hint that, you know, you know I, you could actually, like, you know, become a Force ghost without really knowing it yet. Like, kind of giving him a clue. Yeah. Obi-Wan never intended to win that fight. Like, Vader walks in the room and Tarkin's like, we have to, something to the effect of, and he tells Tarkin that Obi-Wan's on the battle station on the Death Star and Tarkin escape said is something. not his plan. I'm yeah, escape face is him not alone. his plan. Yeah, exactly. So that line is uh, tells you right away that they're still connected to some extent. It's it's um, almost like Vader thought, okay, he wants to fight me again, but he didn't know why he wanted to fight him again. Yeah, Vader exactly. probably thought it was revenge, but no, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Vader and he and he doesn't really care for why he wants to fight him again because that fight is so important to Vader. That's the most important fight of Vader's life up until that point. As Darth Vader, because in Legends, and I know I'm using a Legends source here, but in Legends, as soon as Vader's in the suit, like a group of Jedi sends false information that Obi-Wan Kenobi is with them because they want to, like, kill Vader. They want to isolate him and kill him. But that's the big reason why he goes after those Jedi. All he wants to do is kill Obi-Wan Kenobi. And this is... This is the day that he's waited. He even says this will be a day long, long remembered. Yeah, and like, not just mark that. the end of Obi Wan. Remember the scene in Rebels where he's talking to the Emperor and he's like, you know, well, could Ahsoka or could Anakin's Padawan be the key to finding Kenobi? He's he's looking for Kenobi all this time. Yep. You know, <laughs> it's just kind of funny because that's just kind of how it turned out. But now we're seeing Vader at his absolute peak, and the reality is that Vader during the original trilogy trilogy was significantly stronger than we than a lot of the casuals thought. And you would know this if you read the comics, and I mean the new comics, because they're, they're our canon now. Um, yeah. But now we know for sure. We don't even need the comics anymore. Now we know definitively, because the way that he was cutting through those guys was like nothing. He wasn't even breaking a sweat, you know. Yep. It, it was easy. It was easy, and I feel like, you know, only Vader or somebody at that level could, could do something like that. <laughs> yeah, Vader is definitely in the tier of Obi-Wan, or not Obi-Wan, of Palpatine and uh, Yoda. He's in that tier. He's closer to them in power than, like, a peak Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yeah, he's he, yeah even in the suit. Because I think the yep. people think the suit made him weaker. And I think in, in some ways maybe it made it more, you know, because you did a whole video about it. You did a video about how the suit always causes him pain. And, again, that was covered in the film, too, how he goes into the back to tank. But it doesn't matter because his power with the Force is so high. It's like, the, once you get old, dude, this is how it works in Star Wars. Once you get old, it doesn't matter how old you are. Once you know the Force, you're pretty much 25 years old for the rest of your life. That's the way I always <laughs> perceived it, right? Yeah, some, yeah, like Count Dooku didn't really start to feel very old until Revenge of the Sith. So. And, and even then, he only lost because Anakin got better. Everybody check out Stupendous Wave. I don't think I need to tell you that if you're a Star Wars fan. There's, like, daily content on his channel for Star Wars. 
uh, you're always going to get something. There's And there's so many videos in the archives to look through. Um, you know, he does what-if scenarios. He does uh, lore breakdowns of both canon and non-canon sources. Just There's just so much stuff on your channel. And I want everybody to check it out if you have not. And thank you for being here, bro, and talking to me about Vader. Yeah, thank you. Definitely would be on again if you asked. <laughs> All right, we'll do it soon then. All right, we'll talk to you guys down the road. Let us know. Oh, let us know your thoughts before I go. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section. Um, well, first of all, did you enjoy? Now we can talk spoilers. Did you enjoy the scene at the end of um, of Rogue One? Do you want a solo Darth Vader movie? That's why I really want to know about this. I'm pretty sure everyone's gonna say yes. And let us know. Let us know where you would rank Vader in terms of your own power scaling. Would you put him at third behind Palpatine and Yoda? Would you put him at fourth behind Palpatine? Well, okay, Vader in Rogue One. Okay, so Luke is not a Jedi yet. In Rogue One, where do you put Vader at as far as all-powerful Jedi? Let us know in the comments. We'll talk to you guys later.